After a lot of tweaking, I present to you the Spartacus shuttle. Now, we're going to test flight this. This is going to be interesting to see if it even uh, functions. But we're running three hybrid engines. So these will do air intake and then they will do our natural like burn. So it'll kind of turn into a rocket uh, once we need it, once we're out of the atmosphere. Then we have these four in air takes on either side to make sure that we have plenty of air and you know control such sections and all that but uh we have the fuel here so there's a fuel tank there and a, a three fuel tanks there it's one long one is what it really is and right here we have a crew tank right because if you have a spaceship like a massive giant interstellar spaceship like you see in sci-fi stuff you need to build it first and you can't just build that on the ground because that doesn't it's it's too much right it's too much to get into space most of the time it's meant as like a carrier so you build it and then you go to different planets with it but the problem is you need to build it in space and in order to do that we need a type of dry dock or space dock basically where you have you know an area in which you assemble the thing you fly parts up and you assemble it which means we need to have some type of space station which means we need to be able to you know get people up there uh, and this is a good way to do it so we have a crew tank right so we can hold people in it plus we have our flight crew uh, we have some RCS because we're going to be in space and that's really helpful for maneuvering. As you see, we don't currently have a docking port because we don't need it at the moment. We will end up using it. And in the future, we can also remove one fuel tank in the crew tank and put in a, uh, a cargo bay and be able to release small satellites or just hold, you know, other stuff that has to go up there. So this idea and this concept is like the first step to making our dry docks. And honestly, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be pretty good. I got some, uh, some, yeah air brakes in order to come back down but this is literally i think our first test flight so let's uh let's do it i think we're not gonna have any issues so let's launch things to look out for uh instability to being too slow because you still need to get out of the atmosphere and you need to have enough fuel in order to potentially uh, maneuver when you get back and maneuver in space because you know it's not just getting out of the atmosphere that is going to be the goal here you gotta you gotta be able to maneuver a bit you know our our docks let's say let's say our docks are at a hundred thousand meters right if if that's the case we need to be able to get there and back which actually takes quite a bit of, of fuel so we got to keep that in mind also, just general function, like what feels good about the aircraft and what doesn't feel good about it, and then we'll we'll kind of go from there. Because, you know, it's if if you're ooh, we'll smash the the uh, the tanks on the back onto the ground. But if if something you feel like isn't necessarily working, then you want to make sure that you fix it. Oh, by the way, I have the little. Uh, generator things there so I don't necessarily need some solar panels on this thing I could just use those and they fit nicely between my air intakes in fact they look quite cool in front of the back they're kind of like like air strikes right so they're just it looks more aerodynamic uh, this way than having a ton of solar panels which the problem with solar panels is if if you have them on the the top and the bottom which you really need to do if you have some type of shuttle that way you're getting illumination whichever which way and you don't necessarily have to be pointing any specific direction in order to make sure you're getting power uh, especially in this game when you could speed up time and suddenly lose all your power and then you're you're screwed for a while so having these makes that a lot easier plus on re-entry you just especially with the solar panels on the bottom you're feeling like you're gonna just rip them off and the strain of, you know, all of the, the pressure that goes onto the bottom of the the spacecraft. So you want to make sure that that doesn't happen either. Let's get a bit higher and let's see how this thing is faring. I have a pretty steep angle here. 
uh, which is kind of good bad, right? So it's good in the fact that I need to really get into this section of the atmosphere, which is a lot thinner. I'll pick up a lot more speed and I'll have a lot less drag, which means I'll be more fuel efficient, right? So we want to get up there as soon as possible, but I'm not gaining a lot of speed, as you can see. It's going up, and I could make it go up a bit more if I just even tilt this down a little bit more, but I need it to, you know, as long as it's gaining at a kind of rapid rate, you know, it's mild, uh, then once we hit that part of the atmosphere, we can push the nose down a bit and then start going more horizontally, which will increase speed. We, you know, just like in uh, Rocket, we need to hit the 2,200 meter mark on uh, per second for you know, establishing an orbit. At least typically, that's, that's what you kind of want to shoot for. And as long as I have about 75,000 uh, for elevation, then should be good. Because once I hit that, then I can just, you know, get the rest of my orbit done, uh, as you'll see. But so far, pretty stable. It had a wobble to begin with, but now that we've, you know, got everything stabilized, we're going quite well. Uh, one thing I may want to do, just because I can, is to turn on the cockpit lights. And heck, I, I know that I don't have anybody in here at the moment, but I'm going to turn the cabin lights on too. May as well test everything, make sure all of our lights work. Ooh, oh, oh, no, no, uh, no, eek, okay. It's a bit unstable at uh, 11,000, so as soon as we're about to hit the slower, or the, the lower amounts of uh, atmosphere, okay. Well, we can fix that. The worst part was, is you could start seeing it happen, and I couldn't do anything to fix it. So, I'm gonna have to be aware when that happened, and maybe maybe point my nose down a bit. That'll help stabilize it when we're making that transition into the lower atmosphere. Fear, rather. Uh, yeah, hopefully that will do it. Let's try this again. So I'm gonna try this angle now. Still that wobble. I get that wobble on launch. Not quite sure what it is exactly. Look, I'm pointing straight at the moon. It's like a Monero. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what that wobble is exactly. It's probably just the SAS trying to account for some weird instability or stalling going on on one of the wings. And I probably should point out the wing design is very intentional. I've made a large surface because if I have a lot of surface area coming down on the atmosphere when I'm re-entering, it should slow us down a bit more. That's a theory. I don't know how functional that will be. Typically, uh, you want the wings to almost bend like upwards just slightly like this uh, on these kind of space shuttles because on re-entry you want the heat to dissipate a lot better off of the wings and you know these wings don't have shielding on them but that's just because of the uh, I guess the limitations with B9 but if I could I would put shielding on the bottom and make it look all cool and spaceshipy but with that, uh, you know, you, you want the, the heat to dissipate as quickly as possible on a real spaceship. With this, not so much. Don't really care too much. Things can heat up and explode and stuff, but I think uh, our design will be just fine. Keeping a close eye on our stability here. It could be the speed, too. Maybe we were just picking up enough speed to start making the aircraft instable. Insta in that was a hard word to get out, but... It, you know, sometimes the speed will do that once you hit starting, you know, like like 200 meters per second, let's say, uh, within atmosphere, it starts changing the way the aerodynamics will work on the wings, which makes everything kind of go crazy, kind of like we saw. Just making micro adjustments here, just to make sure that we're staying as stable as possible. I'm trying to keep my, you know, my altitude or attitude going just enough so I'm still gaining uh, altitude but I'm not going you know too too quickly up into that second part of the atmosphere I think the worst part is going to be once we hit that like large section there where our intakes are starting to get kind of drained not getting enough air uh, we need to make sure our switchover point on our engines is timed correctly because if it isn't i think we may flip out and just explode 
So the feeling I get while I'm controlling this, I definitely feel like I, I'm having to do a lot of adjustments, as you can tell. Like it's tap, 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 like making sure that I'm not just like pulling up super hard and making sure that, uh, you know, I'm facing the direction that I need to be and that I'm not starting to go kind of left and right, which, you know, can be can be a bit difficult, but it's it's taking a lot of effort to keep this thing stable is what it feels like so we could probably do something about that maybe actually maybe smaller wings that sometimes helps in a weird way it, instead of having like this massive angle that we have like out like this maybe making them more like that so you know more of a acute angle as opposed to the yeah the obtuse angle that we have going on with the, the massive wing change there Oop, uh, uh, stay on target. Okay, need to pull up a bit more. We need more altitude. Uh, that way we can really switch over to the better engines here. I th I'm thinking we'll be able to get to about 1,200 meters a second uh, before I need to flip engines, but that also depends on our altitude, so we'll, we'll see. So I'm starting to pull up a bit more. It's allowing me to get a bit more altitude and... Uh, hopefully get to that point where I can switch over engines. Once I switch these engines, it'll provide a lot more thrust, which actually in turn provides a lot more control. Uh, strange concept, but picking up a lot of speed now. And our air intakes are starting to get kind of low. At about 0.3, we really want to consider switching over. Um, maybe even before that, maybe like 0.4. Uh, if we can get to 1,200 meters a second, I think that would be ideal to switch over. Let's try that, so that way we have a benchmark. Let's try 1,200. I'm keeping an eye between this and my my speed, so I'm looking at my air intake, I'm looking at my speed, I'm looking at my altitude. That's the other real key thing here is making sure that stays kind of going up as much as I can. Uh, about 1,100. That should be good. Let's do 1,100 and boom. Suddenly a lot more thrust. Now we have a lot of fuel on this thing, so we should be fine. But I am playing it a bit safe here. We'll do, I think a good benchmark would might, yeah, about 100,000 uh, on altitude here. Because if, if we're at 30 now on our apoapsis, but that will go up rapidly the second we start getting into this zone of our atmosphere. And once we start... Uh, pulling up a bit more which we will do here in a second i'm really keeping an eye on our control looks a lot better our speed is going up real quick we're not pulling up super hard there's a slight amount of pull up there as it tries to escape the atmosphere and it's it's creating a lot of lift but instead it's lifting the nose of the aircraft up so I'm gonna bring it down just a bit and keeping an eye on our apoapsis everything's going quite good we're we're on a trajectory that will allow us to escape here now with our station that we make we want to make sure that it is just about perfect when it comes to the altitude that is at. So it would be about 100,000 on apoapsis and periapsis, like almost perfect. And I want to make sure that it is also as level with the equator of Kerbin as possible. It'll make it a lot easier to rendezvous with it uh, as we get closer to the, you know, to the point where we're needing to do that. Because honestly, you don't want to, what are we at? Uh, we're slowing down a bit, but we are going to get to our apoapsis. Yeah, you really don't want to have any issues where you're having to launch and then, you know, make a lot of corrections and then orbit around a few times and then finally dock with the thing in order to rendezvous with your space station. You want to be able just to launch and almost be there uh, as you get up into orbit, which requires precise timing, which we will definitely work on for sure. Okay, so... We are time accelerated, but we can bring that down. I do have RCS. I am in space now. We're officially out of the atmosphere. And I can officially go like this and speed up. 
to there and let's establish an orbit but I just want to keep an eye on it uh, it's about a hundred thousand I think we could do another hundred thousand but once again this is all test we're burning through our fuel fairly quickly but we don't need a whole lot for return so I'm not excited we actually barely need any for return a little bit more boom that's pretty good do we have lights Let's test our lights out we have lights we're gonna test out some EVA oh this is looking good our first space shuttle the Spartacus is functional it's totally working we'll make some design changes for it but overall I'm quite happy with this cool now the matter of re-entry. I gotta figure out where exactly I wanna land. Probably the Space Center, just to be safe, but uh, I do wanna do some EVA first and really check it out from space, see how it's holding up.